Welcome everybody to Dark Ages. Yagmoth the Rogue here and today we'll be learning how to play Dark Ages. After you have downloaded, installed, clicked the desktop shortcut and watch the intro video, you'll be on this screen. From here we can click the create tab and we can choose from female or male. We can select our hair type and color and ignore the armors as these armors are just here to display what can be available to you based on what classes you choose. Do not worry about class for now as you will begin the game as a peasant and later you will do a mini quest to select your class and then learn, learn those associated skills and abilities. So pick out a name and then a password and then hit OK. And then next we'll be taken back to the main screen. Now if we just click continue we can type in our name and password and log into the game. So here we are in the tutorial zone, naked. We don't have any armor yet, so I recommend taking one step forward along the path and we'll get a pop-up. Reading through this pop-up, you can take your time and do that. Now at the end of this dialogue, we'll be given some clothes. And to access the clothes menu, just press A and then you can press 1 and 2 to equip your clothes. Next we'll walk up and talk to this knight guy right here and he'll teach us a little bit about combat but we'll skip through that because I'll teach you about combat. Now he'll give you a stick. We can equip, equip the stick by just pressing 1 or to double click the stick in our inventory. And if we click on ourselves we can see all of the possible equipment slots that are available to us including our shirt, boots, and stick. Next we can attack one of these little critters by moving towards him and pressing the space bar. You will see a little bar indicating his hit points above him when you successfully connect to hitting him, like so. And then if you continue to press space bar or hold down the space bar key, you'll continue assailing them. In Dark Ages, there is a mechanic where if you attack the side of a creature, you'll do roughly 1.5 times as much damage, and if you attack the creature from the back, you'll do roughly two times as damage with each swing. So a person that is continually attacking the back of the creature will be continuing to do twice as much damage as normal. So I definitely recommend initiating combat by attacking creatures on the back. Now we'll go back and talk to the knight and see what else he has to say because we've killed some creatures and he'll tell us about other people we can talk to. So let's head back up the path and see if we can find this old man that he mentioned. There he is. If we click on him, he has a variety of things that we can learn. I recommend checking all of them out, but we can just skip this for now. So next, kind of let's head up into the shop and talk to the shopkeeper. To enter a door, if it's closed, we can just double click somewhere on the door and it will open. And once inside, we can talk to this guy to begin our first quest. It appears he's having a floppy problem. So he'll ask us to kill one male and one female floppy, so that way perhaps they will breed a little less. And we'll tell him, sure, we can go and kill us some floppies. Tells us that one of them is brown and one of them is white. So we can just kind of head out the door here and go track us down some floppies. So we can see that these guys don't really look like floppies, and it doesn't appear to be any floppies in his upper vicinity. Uh, to turn on this map, this is a tab map, so if you press tab, it'll bring this up. And we can see here where there's a hole in the wall. Well, that's usually an exit to another map. So if we go through here, we can see we have a field of floppies. And there's one brown here and there's one white there. So we'll begin attacking the floppy from back, because that has pretty good attacking practices. Now one thing that you can do if you're tired of holding spacebar all the time, Oh, well, looks like I didn't quite kill that floppy, but we'll get him later. Is that you can hold control and then double right click on a creature and you will automatically attack them until they die. Now control double right clicking is just a substitute for holding down the space bar. It will not use any spells or skills for you.
Now that we have cleaned up two floppies, one white and one brown, we can head back and turn in the quest. We can click on him to turn in the quest and he'll reward us handsomely with 600 gold coins. Not too bad. We can leave the quest area and we notice that on the map that we have three different colors. We have the white indicating where we cannot walk, green indicating the NPCs, and red indicating monsters that we can attack. On this brown board, if we double click it, we can read that this is a blacksmith and we can right click to close this prompt. Let's enter the blacksmith shop to see what we're dealing with. At any time you think you're stuck or can't enter an area, press F5 first to refresh the game. If we click on him, ooh, we have an option, let's click on that. Does not appear to be a quest, so we can click on him and click buy to see what he is selling. Looks like he's selling some swords here, and what we can see is that on the right side, if we click on one of the items or hover above it, we can see what class is required to use it, what level you're required to wield it, and how much it weighs in your inventory. Same thing with shields, it tells us what class and what weight they are. Of course, all means that any class can wield it, but since we don't meet the love requirements for these items, we'll not buy anything and we can walk out. So now I think we've seen enough of this uh, beginning tutorial area and we can make our way back to the path and continue towards the exit. So it looks like we have gained some experience and leveled up. If we press G, we can see that we have some flashing arrows indicating that we can advance our stat points. So let's talk about stat points. STR is strength and it affects how much weight you can carry and how much bonus damage you deal when attacking. INT is intelligence, it primarily affects all spell damage. WIS is Wisdom and affects how much mana you gain per level and how much passive mana regeneration you have. CON is Constitution. It affects how much hit points you gain per level and how much your passive hit point regeneration is. And Dex is Dexterity. It affects your passive armor class and your accuracy with spells and physical attacks. In this game, when you level up, your new hit points and mana points are based on an equation that involves your current Constitution or Wisdom score. So if your constitution or wisdom is always 3, you will always be getting the minimal amount of hit points or mana point increases per level. If you dump all of your stats into constitution or wisdom, or a combination of both, you will naturally have higher hit points or mana points than other characters of your level. I do not recommend handicapping yourself by placing all of your stat points into constitution or wisdom throughout your leveling experience because for you to advance beyond 99, you will need to master. And all master quest requirements require that you have certain spells or skills. And spells and skills in this game have prerequisites that involve you having certain stat requirements to learn them. Also, after you are 99 and master, you can buy more hit points and mana points with the experience that you farm. You can continually advance your character this way, and there are hit point and mana point based attacks that you may get. It is also important to not neglect constitution and wisdom as having a good amount of hit points and mana points while you are leveling up is very helpful for survival. So for now I suggest not spending these stat points until you know about what class you want to become and have watched my basic starting videos for those classes where you can get tips and tricks on how to best allocate your stat points. So let's leave the room now. We can get another pop up, we can just click through this and we get a little bit more experience. Do not worry about the hit points and mana points we have lost based on this one level we have gained at such a low level. It is an insignificant amount for the amount of stat points that you have right now. So after this pop-up, we can press A to open our inventory and we'll notice that we have four different items. We have two rings, a book, and a dirk. We can equip the rings by pressing 1, 2, and the dirk by pressing 4 or double clicking onto them. Now, we just got sucked through the door because we waited for too long. This is a mechanic to prevent people from blocking doors. If it's every so often you're near a door, you'll get sucked out of it. So if you don't want to be sucked out of a door, you can just stay a couple of squares away from it. So right now you may be wondering a lot of things, such as it looks like you've taken a lot of damage. But that's not true. 
We've equipped rings, and these rings have added a large amount of hit points and mana points to us to help us survive. Now, you guys also might be wondering how to select classes. Well, let's go do that. Let's go select our class. To do that, we'll need to go outside. So let's head outside first. Once we're outside and we'll block a decent amount away from that door, we can go down to this icon in the lower right screen that looks like a dime with a circle in it. That is our map. We'll click on that to bring up the map. And we can see a map has a key on the bottom that tells us what the icons on the map mean. Our goal is to head to this temple of choosing. And uh, we are indicated on the map by kind of this red spinning triangle thing. And it looks like to get to the temple, we'll need to walk down this path here, over the bridge, take a left at this fountain, and we're there. So to close the map, simply click on it or press escape, and we can walk there. So you'll be noticing that it is snowing right now. That's because we're in winter time when I'm recording this video, and there's a Christmas event going on that people are taking advantage of, which are real fun and stuff. And so there are a couple ways that we can walk. We can either use the arrow keys, or right click the ground, or Z, X, and C keys. This game does have a small issue with desync. So pressing F5 anytime things look weird, like if you're having trouble entering a building or if you're having trouble walking past certain objects, press F5 and then you should be good to go. Now here we are at the Temple of Choosing. We just need to walk on inside and talk to the NPC. Once inside, we can click on this NPC called Aoki and select Path Reception. You may read the dialogue, but in the end we're going to select Yes and then we'll select yes one more time and then we'll be teleported inside. Now the temple looks like this. We are in the sitting room and each of the classes are along the outsides. So we'll have to make our way there. In this temple we tested and asked a bunch of questions and based on the answers it will tell us what it thinks, which direction to go to, and what class to ultimately pick. But in the end we can choose whatever we want. I'm planning on making this character a priest so let us head that way. Also, the thing to note is everything in this video, minus the path we choose, will be the same for all classes. So the selections that we take and stuff. So once we're inside, there is these circles, and it's important to walk to the center of each circle and get this pop-up. You must receive a pop-up in every room that you've walked into in order to be able to select your class, because this is the trial that we've done. Uh, the pop-ups will tell you if you seek to be more magic-like to go one way and if you seek to be more physical-like go the other way. The last room will tell us if we want to be a wizard or go into the other room if we don't. And this room will tell us if we want to be a rogue, go forward, and if we want to be a priest, go right. Once you've gone to your class area, we can select our class by clicking on the NPC, choosing the class that we want to become, clicking alone, and then space firing through the rest of the dialogue, she'll make us the class and teleport us to the entrance. If there was another player in the game that wanted to mentor the us, they could guide us here and make us a priest too. We can now clear our inventory of this tutorial book that they gave us, and then head outside. Outside is where we will begin all of our class guides from this spot right here. And if we want to verify that we have indeed became a priest, we can click on our character or press AA twice, and we can see our class up here has changed from peasant to priest. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching my beginner's guide. I'll see you all in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Links will be in the description.